Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless our world is in big trouble divides are growing deeper inequalities are growing wider and challenges are spreading farther Let's have no illusions. We are in rough seas. A winter of global discontent is on the horizon. A cost of living crisis is raging. Trust is crumbling. Inequalities are exploding. And our planet is burning. People are hurting with the most vulnerable suffering the most. The United Nations Charter and the ideals it represents are in jeopardy. We have a duty to act. And yet we are gridlocked in colossal global dysfunction. The international community is not ready or willing to tackle the big dramatic challenges of our age. This crisis threatens the very future of humanity and the fate of our planet. Crises like the war in Ukraine and the multiplication of conflicts around the globe, climates like the climate emergency and biodiversity loss, crises like the dire financial situation of developing countries once-in-a-lifetime climate shocks may soon become once-a-year events. A once-in-a-generation global cost of living crisis is unfolding, turbocharged by the war in Ukraine. Some 94 countries, home to 1.6 billion people, many in Africa, face a perfect storm. Economic and social fallout from the pandemic, soaring food and energy prices, crushing debt burdens, spiraling inflation and the lack of access to finance. These cascading crises are feeding on each other, compounding inequalities, creating devastating hardship, delaying the energy transition and threatening global financial meltdown. Social unrest is inevitable with conflict not far behind. But by acting as one, we can nurture fragile shoots of hope. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure and unrighteousness. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, 
apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. John 15, 18-20 If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. It has been four years since a Colorado baker who refused to create a same-sex wedding cake won his legal battle at the U.S. Supreme Court, and now there is a major new test for the nation's anti-discrimination laws. Yeah, this time it's a wedding website designer and a claim that being forced to serve LGBTQ plus couples would violate her rights under the First Amendment. The case has big stakes for equality and free speech. Our Devin Dwyer joins us now with more on that. Hey, Devin. After those blockbuster decisions on abortion and gun rights, the Supreme Court is about to get back in action. Issues of gay rights and free speech will be front and center, along with the question, can a business owner refuse to serve you if you believe doing so would violate free speech? This is a cake that the person requested, some pretty flowers. Jack Phillips is still baking masterpiece cakes. A way to showcase my art. And still turning away customers as a matter of conscience. I don't create cakes to celebrate Halloween or cakes with uh, profanity on them. If I don't, if it's not something I will say, then it's not something I'll write on a cake. As a devout Christian, he says he also can't support same-sex marriage. In 2012, he turned away a gay couple in a wedding cake case that reached the U.S. Supreme Court. Phillips narrowly won the case, but the court left a key question unanswered. Whether Colorado's anti-discrimination law violates the free speech rights of business owners who don't want to create a product for an LGBTQ customer. Like um, an artist who uses a traditional canvas and a paintbrush, I approach my work in the same way. Lori Smith owns a small graphic design firm in Denver and also opposes same-sex marriage. She says she can't make wedding websites because of potential fines under Colorado's law. I am a Christian, and as a Christian, I believe that marriage is between one man and one woman. And while I'm happy to serve everyone, there are certain messages I'm unable to promote through my business. Would you deny a wedding website request from a Muslim couple that wanted to put Quran verses on the homepage? I'm never refusing a project based on who's requesting it, uh, requesting the work, but the message that I'm being asked to pour my time talents into promoting and celebrating. Smith sued Colorado under the First Amendment in 2019, but lower federal courts sided with the state, saying it has an overriding interest in ensuring equal access to publicly available goods and services. But this fall, the U.S. Supreme Court will take up Smith's appeal. If you're open to the public, you need to accommodate everybody. That's a core of our civil rights law, and it has deep roots in American law. Colorado Attorney General Philip Weiser says baking a cake or designing a website is a service. Thank you. Thank you. Not speech. If the court carves out an exemption for business owners like Lori, what would the impact be? This core principle of American law, that everyone has access to the marketplace, could be undermined when you create a loophole that people get to say, I'm not going to serve you because I don't want to serve and then fill in the blank. Research published last year by the Journal of Legal Studies found religious exemptions under civil rights law can have a significant and robust, even if inadvertent, impact on customers, estimating a 61 to 85 percent chance that same-sex couples will experience discrimination when planning a wedding. I think people have been aware of the wedding-related services of cakes and flowers, um, but it's not just cakes and flowers. Think about haircuts. Uh, think about clothing design, think about landscape design. Any kind of custom good or service can be thought of as having creative or artistic qualities. At the center on Colfax in the heart of downtown Denver, members of the city's LGBTQ community say they're watching the justices closely. I think that 
what's really important is that if somebody decides that they do need to speak up about unfair treatment, that we have laws that protect them. Phillips and Smith say their beliefs are sincere and deserve to be respected, asking the Supreme Court's conservative majority to step in on their side. In practical terms, you'd like to see Colorado's Anti-Discrimination Act struck down or an exception created? I want to create freely and to be able to do that without the government imposing fines and other forms of punishment simply because they don't hold the same views. Now, 23 states, guys, plus D.C. have laws that prohibit discrimination based on sexual orientation in public accommodation. That includes businesses. So the impact of this case could go far beyond Colorado. A decision is expected early next year. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets who were before you. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3, 1 Corinthians 12.26 And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave. Be strong. Puerto Rico in the dark after powerful winds from Fiona knocked out power to nearly everyone on the island. Those winds nonstop for two days, dumping 30 inches of rain and leaving hundreds of thousands with no running water. Five years after Hurricane Maria devastated the island, Fiona battering Puerto Rico, killing one person. The U.S. territory's governor calling the damage catastrophic. More than a thousand people rescued. First responders in waist deep floodwaters scouring this area in Añasco and rescuing people trapped in their homes. In Salinas, Ruben Ramos and his mother Onelia called 911 at midnight. The water, she says that the water was running just like this, but inside of her house. But firefighters couldn't reach them for seven hours. What was it like when the firefighters arrived? Como sentieron cuando los bomberos llegaron? Oh, felicidad, que felicidad. estamos a salvo. Felicidad, you were happy, you were relieved. Happy, happy, yes. happy. Small communities underwater. In the mountain town of Uguado, a torrent of flood water tearing apart this temporary bridge rebuilt after Maria and sweeping it away. Take a look at this dam. Residents tell me they have never seen it like this. And Fiona, it's not done with Puerto Rico yet. This plantain farm in Guanica, damaged by those 85 mile per hour winds, Gus reaching 100 miles per hour. This woman saying she knows nothing because she doesn't have access to anything. Residents traveling to neighboring towns, desperate for supplies and gasoline. Now Turks and Caicos preparing for the wrath of the strengthening hurricane. Fiona barreling over the Dominican Republic as it made its second landfall early Monday morning. 80 mile per hour winds whipping across Punta Cana. West of the popular resort town, Fiona's impact hitting Igwe hard. Roads collapsing, debris pouring into the streets, and the roofs of homes blown off. This home now uninhabitable. But we do begin tonight with Hurricane Fiona barreling up the Atlantic, growing stronger after slamming Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, taking at least four lives so far. Tonight, Fiona is a major hurricane, a Category 3, with winds up to 115 miles an hour. It could be a Category 4 by tomorrow as it moves north, headed potentially toward Bermuda. Now, the eye of the storm north of Turks and Caicos at this hour, 400 miles across this hurricane. Fiona bearing down on the coastline of Turks and Caicos with strong winds and heavy rainfall. Swollen rivers in the Dominican Republic, down trees and power lines blocking streets there. Just extraordinary images coming in. In Puerto Rico tonight, they are assessing the damage from the air. Much of the island still without power. And that bridge we saw being washed away, the crossing now gone. Tonight it is downriver, twisted and useless along the riverbank. By the way, that was a temporary bridge they put in after Hurricane Maria. Ginger Z is tracking this, and she's tracking two more tropical systems now brewing, one that could affect the Gulf Coast. Victor Akendo in Puerto Rico with the damage tonight. Tonight, Fiona pounding Turks and Caicos with 115 mile per hour winds and up to eight feet of storm surge. Fiona already tearing a path of destruction through the Dominican Republic. 
In Puerto Rico, new video showing the Coast Guard assessing the damage Monday. We're in Toa Baja. It's a town not too far from San Juan, and this is what it looks like two days after Hurricane Fiona made landfall here. As much as 30 inches of rain in some areas already, up to four inches more expected tonight. In Utuado, where raging floodwaters destroyed that bridge, this is what it looks like today. That bridge was temporary, built after Hurricane Maria destroyed the previous one in 2017. I just feel trapped because the other way is, is broken too, so we have to go around. Roads in the area, treacherous. The U.S. territory's already fragile power grid devastated. Tonight, about 80% of customers are in the dark. We are fast approaching a time known as the tribulation that Jesus says will be the worst time in human history, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. The world is witnessing unprecedented extreme weather that will carry over into the tribulation period, and the news headlines prove it. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. Mexicans had only just trooped back into their office buildings after an earthquake drill, when suddenly... This is insane! Three times! The real thing began. Two buildings shaking, roads bouncing, and nervous faces. They'd be forgiven for thinking that this day, the 19th of September, is cursed. On the anniversary of two devastating earthquakes, another. This one, a 7.6 magnitude quake. It rattled Mexico on Monday, September 19th, leaving at least one person dead. It crumbled buildings, knocked out power, and left residents wondering what to do next. Government officials say the person who was killed was in the city of Manzanillo when a department store roof collapsed on them. Authorities also reported damage to several hospitals in Michoacan near the epicenter of where the quake hit. Falling glass from one of the hospitals injured one person. Over in Mexico City, buildings were evacuated, people looked on in the streets as the power line shook. Officials said there were no immediate reports of damage in the capital after the tremors, which rumbled through Mexico on the exact same day as major quakes hit the country in 1985 and 2017. Researchers with the National Autonomous University of Mexico said there was no scientific explanation for three major quakes happening on the same day, calling it pure coincidence. I don't believe there are any coincidences when it comes to God. I believe God is trying to shake the world out of its complacency, and he is speaking through today's world news headlines of Jesus' soon return and coming judgment. Jesus speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. A teen driver is accused of running over a man in a wheelchair and leaving the scene in Texas. Disturbing video provided by the Austin Police Department shows the victim crossing a parking lot in his motorized wheelchair. Investigators say he put his hand up to warn an approaching vehicle to slow down. A white pickup truck then comes into frame and does not stop. Instead, it runs the man over, knocking him out of his wheelchair and dragging him under the wheels before driving off. APD says the victim is in the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Surveillance video from the parking lot and an investigation led cops to arrest 17-year-old Pablo Antonio Avila Banagas. 
He's charged with failure to stop and render aid, injury to a disabled person, unlawful carry of a weapon, and failure to identify in relation to this case. He's being tried as an adult and is scheduled to appear in court in November. Tonight, a killer caught on camera. Chilling video released by the Philadelphia Police Department shows the moments leading up to the shooting death of 17-year-old Taryn Johnson, who was walking a dog. And I hear bang, 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 bang. The video starts with a car, hazard lights flashing. According to Philly police, the suspected shooter and driver appear to be lying in wait for Johnson and a friend to pass by. The gunman, dressed in all black, gets out of the car, follows the girls, and appears to hide behind other vehicles parked on the street, then gets back into the car. It drives up the street. The gunman jumps out, opening fire on the Northeast Philly street. Six shots were fired, hitting this parked car, this home window, and finally, fatally hitting Johnson. Police say it appears the gunman targeted the teenager. Just the latest tragedy in the city of brotherly love this year. Police saying 164 minors shot so far, on track to pass last year's number. And the gun violence causing too many deaths. Philadelphia's homicide rate up 3%, on pace to surpass last year's record-breaking number of murders. Even more killings than in much larger cities like New York and Los Angeles. And no signs of letting up. Last weekend, police say 28 people were shot, eight killed. I love Philadelphia. I love visiting. But you live there. What's it like? Dana, I will sum it up with your local affiliate here in Philadelphia, Fox 29's recent report. Delaware County, um, a cemetery in Delaware County, is so overrun they can't keep up the grave diggers cannot keep up literally dana with burying the fresh uh, digging the fresh graves to bury those killed by violence in philadelphia workers at friends southwestern cemetery upper darby 90 percent of new burials are victims of gun violence in philadelphia if that doesn't sum it up, I don't know what does. Gun violence, and let's just show this call for number three. Philadelphia homicides year by year. Um, last year was 562. You can see the increase. Year to date, we're only at September 15th. You're at 386. The urgent search in Louisiana for the killer of a popular LSU student. 21-year-old Allie Rice, a senior marketing major, shot to death in her car at a railroad crossing as she was heading home from a night out with friends. Her father telling ABC News the 21-year-old was in her car at a railroad crossing when she was shot multiple times through her windshield. This should not have happened. Should not have happened. Should not have happened. Should not have happened. When you hear the words from the policeman saying she's with the coroner now, she didn't make it. It's the most devastating words you can ever hear. Just hope that somebody speaks up. It happens in a flash. Brazen thieves busting out car windows stealing anything they can carry. Sometimes even the car itself. Police data shows that over 10,000 cars were stolen in the city in the past year. That's an average of 27 cars stolen every day. Megan Tapley should know. How many times has your car been stolen? Five times. Your car was stolen five times. Yeah. What? Yeah. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society would be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Authorities in Uganda are dealing with a new outbreak of Ebola. The health ministry announcing that a 24-year-old man has died from the disease, the first Ebola death in the country since 2019. The outbreak is located in the central district of Mubende. Six suspicious deaths have occurred in that part of Uganda this month. Scrambling to prevent another Ebola epidemic. Uganda officially declared an outbreak of the deadly virus in the central district of Mubende after recording its first Ebola fatality since 2019. The victim, a 24-year-old man, had tested positive for the relatively rare Sudan strain of Ebola. The World Health Organization said it was investigating six other suspicious deaths, which all occurred in the same district this month. Eight other suspected patients were also in isolation and undergoing treatment. An often fatal hemorrhagic fever, the Ebola virus killed over 11,000 people in West Africa between 2013 and 2016. 
Yet Ugandan health authorities appeared confident the latest outbreak could be contained. Uganda's last confirmed case of Ebola dated back to 2019, when an outbreak in the DRC's North Kivu province spilled over into the country. It was swiftly contained, largely thanks to the Ervibo vaccine, which proved effective against the so-called Zaire variant, but the jab has yet to be approved for use against the Sudan strain of the virus. Backed in a corner, President Vladimir Putin put Russia further on war footing to try to reverse stunning losses in Ukraine. I deem it necessary to support the proposal of the Ministry of Defense and the General Command for partial mobilization in the Russian Federation, he said. That includes a call-up of reserves. With new American and European weapons and increased intelligence cooperation, Ukraine's military has liberated thousands of square miles from Russia over the last two weeks. Perhaps in response, in a seemingly coordinated move, four parts of Ukraine that are partially or completely controlled by Russian troops are now holding votes to become part of Russia. The U.S. has called the vote a sham, but it could give Russia a pretext to annex Ukrainian territory, then threaten to defend it with nuclear weapons. Putin already this morning threatening Russia would use all the means at its disposal, adding, this is not a bluff. A bright and mysterious fireball flying through the sky across Scotland and parts of Ireland and the UK Wednesday night. Hundreds of people saw this thing. Uh, it was in the sky, look, there you go, for about 10 to 20 seconds. CNN Space and Defense correspondent Kristen Fisher is with us now. So what was it? Well, we don't know yet with 100% certainty, but a group called the UK Meteor Network is convinced that it was a meteor, which is a, a small piece of an asteroid uh, which was breaking up as it entered the Earth's atmosphere. The other possible theory that's been floating around is that it was a piece of space junk, you know, like a, an old satellite or a spent rocket body uh, burning up as it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. But most experts seem to be coming into agreement that this was a meteor. Whatever it was, Victor and Allison, it was a spectacle across Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Northern England. And more than 800 people reported it to the UK Meteor Network. And it was captured, as you can see here, in tons of cell phone videos, ring doorbell cameras caught it. And the reason we have such incredible footage of it is because, you know, most fireballs, they only last in the sky for a few seconds. This one could be seen for a full 20 seconds, which is very rare. And it was also pretty slow moving. And a lot of people also reported that it was actually changing color. So we're, you know, there were some really uh, unusual characteristics about this thing, but as all the data comes in, it's looking more and more uh, like it was a meteor. The seven year tribulation is fast approaching this world and the news headlines prove it. God in his grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of its complacency. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes a massive asteroid impact as we read in Revelation 8, 10, and 11. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood, a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. When a person comes to know Jesus as their Savior, 
They are brought into a relationship with God that guarantees their salvation as eternally secure. To be clear, salvation is more than saying a prayer or making a decision for Christ. Salvation is a sovereign act of God whereby an unregenerate sinner is washed, renewed, and born again by the Holy Spirit as we read in John 3.3 and Titus 3.5. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. When salvation occurs, God gives the forgiven sinner a new heart and puts a new spirit within him, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The Spirit will cause the saved person to walk in obedience to God's word, as we read in Ezekiel 36, 27 and James 2, 26. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So what about repentance? Repentance is not a work we do to earn salvation. No one can repent and come to God unless God draws that person to himself, as we read in John 6:44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Repentance is something God gives. It is only possible because of his grace. All of salvation, including repentance and faith, is a result of God drawing us, opening our eyes, and changing our hearts. God's long-suffering leads us to repentance, and so does his kindness, as we read in 2 Peter 3.9 and Romans 2.4. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Or do you despise the riches of his goodness? forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 declares, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Works are not the cause of salvation. Works are the evidence of salvation. Faith in Christ always results in good works. The person who claims to be a Christian but lives in willful disobedience to Christ, has a false or dead faith, and is not saved. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. That is why John the Baptist called people to produce fruit in keeping with repentance, as we read in Matthew 3.8. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. A person who has truly repented of his sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of a changed life, as we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A person who has not repented of their sin and exercised faith in Christ will give evidence of the works of the flesh, as we read in Galatians 5.19-21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. A person who has crucified the flesh and belongs to Christ will give evidence of the Spirit, as we read in Galatians 5.22-24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Believers are born again, regenerated when they believe. For a Christian to lose his salvation, he would have to be unregenerated. The Bible gives no evidence that the new birth can be taken away. The Holy Spirit indwells all believers, as we read in John 14, 17. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him or knows Him, but you know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit baptizes all believers into the body of Christ, as we read in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. 
For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For a believer to become unsaved, he would have to be unindwelt and detached from the body of Christ. John 3.15 states that whoever believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. If you believe in Christ today and have eternal life, but lose it tomorrow, then it was never eternal at all. Hence, if you lose your salvation, the promises of eternal life in the Bible would be in error. Scripture says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, the same God who saved you is the same God who will keep you. Once we are saved, we are always saved. Praise God, our salvation is most definitely, eternally secure. Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready!